To get your school's data into Clever, you need to set up your sync. There are a few ways to sync data. This video is for those setting up an SFTP or manual sync. Not sure which sync type you need? Please check out our onboarding guide at clever.academy slash path slash onboarding for step-by-step -step help in choosing your sync type. When you set up an SFTP or manual sync, you need to set up five required files to get your data organized and sent over to Clever and apps you connect to Clever. The five required files are schools.csv, students.csv, teachers.csv, sections.csv, and enrollments.csv. You can also optionally upload a staff.csv file with non-instructional staff members. You can always access the templates of these files in your Clever dashboard under Sync, Settings, once you've chosen your sync type. Remember, this video is for those who have chosen the SFTP sync type. When you're first setting up your sync, you must upload all five files at once since they interact together to build your Clever data sync. We're going to walk you through all five files over the next few videos. These files must be in CSV or comma-separated value format. CSV files can be edited in a program like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. They can be edited just like a spreadsheet, but just remember to save any changes as a .csv file and not as an Excel file. You can ensure this by going to File, Save As in Excel and File, Download in Google Sheets and selecting .csv when you save the file. Now, let's start by editing your school's .csv file. This file has three required headers, or columns, to be uploaded. Keep in mind, you might have some additional required headers depending on the apps you plan to connect with Clever, and you can always add headers as needed. First, you'll start with school underscore ID which is usually the value used to locally identify the school. That said, if your student information system doesn't have a school underscore ID, you can add any value as long as it's unique for each school. For instance, you can put Meadowlark underscore E-L-E-M, Marshall underscore Middle, Craig underscore H-S, etc. for each school. This column is really important as you'll use it in the other files to tie students, teachers, and classes to the school they relate to. One thing to be aware of when inputting data, if you're editing files in Excel or Google Sheets, be aware of leaving zeros. In short, if you start any inputs with a zero, Excel and Google Sheets will automatically remove the zero at the beginning. If possible, simply avoid using zeros at the beginning of any entry. Otherwise, you can check out the linked Help Center article for more help. Next, you have school underscore name. You can put any letter or number for this, such as PS113 or Meadowlark Elementary. Finally, you have school underscore number. This usually relates to the school number used by the district or county. While school underscore number is typically a different identifier than school underscore ID, you can reuse your school underscore ID values if you prefer. Just be sure to check with your district or county to make sure it's not required. Again, if you don't have a value for this in your student information system, you can choose any unique value for each school, like one, two, three. After you've added these three required headers, the file will be accepted when you go to upload it. That said, there are many additional headers that can help Clever and connected applications work better for you. For instance, including state underscore ID might help with state reporting purposes. And principal name and email may be required by some applications used for district communication. Once you're done with that file, make sure you've saved it as a CSV file and add it to a folder for safekeeping. Nice work! Next up, you'll build your students.csv file.